All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening out there to a few. It is the uh, Earth Master out here on this weekend. Finally made it out here to the weekend. Saturday, November 15th, 2025. Here's the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.4 earthquake up into Alaska. <clears throat> also notice a movement here off the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, a couple earthquakes uh, on the strike slip boundaries out here. A number of them, actually. Let's go ahead and zoom in, see what we got going on here. Uh, this morning, two three-pointers. One of those three-pointers here from yesterday, a little oddball earthquake off of the Gorda Plate, kind of in a zone where you know, I haven't seen too much earthquake activity happen recently. Most of it will be up here along those ridges as we get that spreading seafloor center uh, earthquake activity taking place. But that uh, three-pointer from yesterday, since then, as I mentioned, two more three-pointers and uh, a couple down south here towards the... Uh, middle point the, the uh, triple point boundary nothing big going on there for now but the cascadia subduction zone uh i'm sure it's building up quite a bit of steam and momentum up into the pacific northwest one earthquake this morning up there around the loomis washington area 2.8 again nothing major going on but we will give a just a quick glance here at the volcano maps up there to the pacific northwest by the way trimmer counts out there along the cascadia last yesterday uh, we're 107 epicenters of slow slip events there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's why we're getting all this interesting activity stirring up out there. Oh uh, yeah, so let's get back here to the uh, volcano stuff here. Mount St. Helens, we'll check this out here real quick and uh, see what it's looking like. Not a whole lot being reported, but that doesn't mean anything's not happening. Let's give it a quick glance here and see what's uh, being report or recorded. Looks like a lot of wind from last night. I know there's a massive low pressure system, but that's going to be hitting Southern California. It looks like some wind up there last night. Uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity. Maybe a couple smaller ones in there. That's at Mount St. Helens over around Mount Rainier uh, to the north here. Nothing really being reported, but we'll check out the recorded seismograph station here. And uh, maybe a couple smaller quakes there in the, the black, uh, blue, red lines. Nothing big, no major increase. I don't see any uh, uptick going on there for now. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area, it's been fairly active out here uh, in terms of some earthquake activity from yesterday. Uh, a couple ones today so far. You know, a couple more earthquakes scattered out and about across various fault systems out here, including just off the plate boundary near Pacifica. Hayward Fault, we did have that one, the most recent one this morning, a two-pointer. Got to watch that because the Hayward Fault is, um, you know, it's it's past its window. It's regular reoccurrence interval of large earthquakes. We're past that. We're not in the middle. We're not in the beginning. We are past that. So we could see a big earthquake at any point on that fault system there. Uh, Southern California, a little spotty down here. This is actually a little little too quiet 24 earthquakes it may sound like a lot but nothing above 2.5 these are all very small microquakes out here a couple off the san andreas fault and uh some of them the majority of them along the san and the uh, san jacinto fault zone here fairly lengthy fault that runs uh parallel there for the most part for the uh to the uh, san andreas fault yellowstone national park nothing showing up there for now it is the weekend so we do got to double check these recorded seismograph stations because the preliminary data system that they use up there um, most of the time won't report any small earthquake activity unless it's above 2.5 at Yellowstone. I don't see anything above 2.5 and in fact I don't see really much of anything. A couple very small microquakes out there but uh, that's up here around the um, uh, Madison Creek area. Further down south here yeah, there's one little earthquake but it looks it pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone. There's really not a whole lot going on there for now. Uh, oil fields still rocking and rolling. Some earthquake activity here east of the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone. Got one earthquake over here around the Tennessee area this morning. A couple there around the New Madrid Seismic Zone from yesterday, but nothing big. Just a little bit of small microquake activity. Uh, fairly active over here across uh, towards the Western Pacific and the adjacent plate here, the Filipino plate. Got uh, quite a bit of earthquakes stirring up here from yesterday and today. Quick glance at the Earthquake 3D globe shows some of that movement. 
There's a super deep earthquake there back on the back side of Japan. That may be associated with the, um, yeah, that's more than likely it's going to be associated here with this subduction zone. That's a 4.3 this morning, uh, 163 miles deep. That's pretty deep into the subduction zone. The Japan Trench over here, but this is offset here and more than likely associated with this subduction zone. Uh, that would be associated with the Nankai Trough there. So we'll watch that. I don't see anything stirring up there on the, on the Nankai Trough for now, but that's a pretty deep earthquake. A couple more earthquakes around the Japan Trench. Um, there's this one that stirred up here this morning as well, 4.7. Been pretty active out here across this area recently uh, with that 6.8 and uh, another six-pointer out there. A couple six-pointers and multiple fives. Right now, that swarm that's been stirring up uh, out here has kind of calmed down. Just one earthquake today, but we'll watch that. If this thing you know, starts showing major increasing movement, uh, then that could be pointing at something bigger uh, in near term as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, the Philippines, a lot of older movement there from yesterday. Uh, really not a whole lot of newer activity. It does look like a four-pointer down here across uh, the Indonesia area. New Zealand, older movement from yesterday, nothing major. Do have some deeper activity into the Tonga Trench once again. Alaska, pretty quiet up there. Uh, Middle America Trench, quiet. South America, somewhat uh, of an uptick here along the Peru Chile Trench. Looks like a little cluster going on down here. Let's go ahead and turn this back on to the uh, land view. Yeah, there's a five pointer late last night, a couple other fours in there all over the place. This is a mixed bag of deep and shallow adjustment. So watch this subduction zone. Normally when things start spreading out like that, we get the mixture of deep and shallow adjustment. That means that things are about ready to, to pop up here upstream where this deeper activity is occurring. These two deep earthquakes right here. So watch this subduction zone. The Peru Chile Trench. Also some movement up here. Um, eastern side, <coughs> excuse me, of the uh, Caribbean plate. 4.9. It's been pretty active out here in this area recently. Pretty good cluster of movement. Uh, we're a six-pointer struck here a couple weeks back, 6.5. Uh, so far, the largest aftershock is going to be that 6.6, .6, or a 6, just a 6 that happened uh, uh, about 20 minutes or so later. I don't see anything major brewing there for now, but a little 4.9 aftershock. Nothing major going on out there in the Atlantic. Pretty quiet looking. Uh, Turkey area in the Mediterranean region, just some older activity from yesterday. Maybe a couple newer quakes in the region, but that swarm comes and goes in these weird, it seems like every couple days it'll quiet down, then it will stir back up for a couple days. Definitely some interesting activity out there. Uh, let's see if there's anything else major going on. I don't see anything else major as far as earthquake activity goes. And of course the largest magnitude here. Uh, after midnight, it's going to be that 4.9, pretty deep earthquake there into the Tonga Trench at 141 miles deep. Taking a quick glance here at the space weather activity, we do have a coronal hole facing us. Not directly, though. It's not really center disk of the sun. It's more, more of a, a northward point. This is not the current data. Um, this is recent, but even so, this is behind a little bit. So you have to look at this image to get one of the, the newer images so it's off here to the west now uh, no earthquake uptick with this I think it's got something to do when it's more centered disk of the Sun as far as seeing elevated earthquake activity when these large coronal holes are facing us but that's actually a very small one very small compared to what we have seen uh, in the past but uh, really not expecting much in terms of the flaring activity right now let's take a look 4274 just Barely got a glimpse of it on the western limb. Still looking like a monster, but uh, that flare threat uh, is going to drop. I'm going to have to adjust mine because once this is no longer visible, well, <laughs> there's not a whole lot visible in terms of sunspots out here after, after that one leaves the earth-facing side of the sun. Very low solar conditions um, following the departure of 4274, which was the source 
uh, multiple X flares and CMEs and, and that produce that Aurora activity here a um, couple nights back there. Pretty decent. I even seen it again here in Northern California with my camera, with my phone camera. Couldn't really see it with the, uh, uh, just, you know, just with my eyes, but the phone definitely helped bring it out. Uh, so right now, you know, with that sunspot still somewhat visible, we do have a 30% chance there of X flare and flare at 70 proton event at 20%, but that's, that has actually gone away overnight. It looks like this was lit up here for the past seven days with protons and just getting bombarded. By the way, we're at day three since the space weather activity has died down. No major earthquake uptick. In fact, during the period of heightened space weather activity, one of the more you know active periods that we've seen in quite a while, not even nothing to show for it. No major earthquake uptick, nothing unusual. I'm writing that down in my book. Uh, that uh, That's a nay. That, <laughs> that did not elevate earthquake activity. Uh, the coronal holes, I think there's a little bit more, um, more credible data when it comes to when the coronal holes are more center disk, large enough. But these, this little one, when it's offset like that, I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, but we have seen here in the recent past where the coronal holes are center disk and massive, like this one a couple months ago. This is actually three months old or so now, 9, 10, 11, two months. Uh, that one stirred up a lot of earthquake activity around the Philippines when that was a uh, center disk. But that was, you know, like I say, that's a super old image. I, I just think there's more more credibility to the coronal hole activity in, <clears throat> in relationship to the earthquake uptick when it takes place. But this one, going down on the negative side, massive solar flare activity, massive CMEs, massive proton events. And what do we got to show for it? Not much in terms of earthquake activity, I'll tell you that. Storm Prediction Center today, not a whole lot of severe weather. A little marginal risk up here across the uh, Pennsylvania area, it looks like, for some, just a little bit of wind. Going to be blowing those wind chimes around a little bit today. We got a little bit of wind out here in Northern California as well. We got we got the north wind kicking up here. That's going to heat us up. We've got downslope winds there from the uh, Mount Shasta area, Redding area. Scoots south in the valley. Stirs up the warmth. Going to be around 80 today, but then we got uh, this low pressure that's going to wrap back around and bring us rain. Southern California picking up quite a bit of moisture down there all over the place, including the deserts down there. Quite the uh, quite the system. I believe that's one of the, the wettest November systems on record for Southern California. That's pretty crazy. So there's our rain wrapping back around for Northern California towards the end of the weekend. And then Monday we get another system coming in there, bringing further moisture even all the way down into southern california and the desert southwest then another cut off low pressure system there as we head towards next weekend almost following the same track there as uh, the current system so pretty <laughs> interesting weather going on here uh, across the west coast and then things start to change uh, maybe for some a good way maybe some a bad way uh, for me with that cold air dipping down here, that's going to allow ridging out here across the West Coast, and that is not good. That means the storm track is going to be pushed uh, well up north. I hope that changes. I really do, because I, I would love to see systems come in all winter like we're seeing right now. That would be nice. But either way, cold air coming down here towards the uh, end of November, beginning of uh, December. The Climate Prediction Center here, uh, is showing on the 6 to 10 day forecast. Got uh, some warmer weather out there. That's near term uh, for the majority of the country east of the Rockies. Precipitation wise going to be kicking up as well. Looks a little below average there for the uh, Northern California region for the 6 to 10 day forecast. Just the way this low pressure system is kind of coming in from the south and wrapping that moisture back around. Uh, now the 8 to 14 day forecast there. E. I don't like to see that below average precipitation there for California, uh, but cooler it looks like maybe across the West Coast. Above precipitation across the Dakotas and in the Montana area it looks like. So this is kind of a an unusual pattern that's um, um, kicking up here. Hopefully it doesn't stay set like that. I know you got to have these patterns to create 
pressure differences and that can really stir up the weather and we can see some uh you know dry periods and it switches over to wet weather and i just hope it doesn't stay too dry out here along the west coast i've been pretty thankful here for the rain that we have had but uh i, I want it to come back <laughs> i don't want it to stay away uh temperature anomalies there yeah look at that massive gee, that's ugly warm weather out there in december for california that's just not my type of weather i'm telling you look at that cool pool coming in all right folks um trying to think if there's anything else going on here ants is offline there it looks like so i'm not for sure why they're offline we'll just remove them and then if we need to then we'll add them back up here uh, but for now those curious about the seismograph stations here, Barrett is down there in Southern California. Uh, the Philippine Station, Petrolia in Northern California, uh, stationed there along the Pru Chile Trench in Chile, Japan, Parkfield, California, uh, Kagoshima there along the southwestern side of Japan area around the Nankai Trough, and then the station there in Yellowstone. But uh, for now, folks, just kind of a Somewhat of a quiet day. Nothing major up. There's no major uptick going on. Typical day of the plates shuffling around. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on for the Saturday night update. Enjoy your Saturday. Hope everyone's going to have a good one out there. I'm going to probably hang outside since it's going to be almost 80 degrees. Probably barbecue a little bit. Let the kids play out in the sun here and uh, enjoy uh, the sun before we get some rain. I. I'll be outside barbecuing sun or rain anyway. That's just how I am. But I prefer the rain. But while we're at it, while we have a day of sunshine, might as well enjoy it. Have a good one. We'll see you out here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.